Uh, I'm super happy to be here to, uh, together with you today to talk about podcars, self-driving uh, buses, public transport and sustainable transportation. Uh, so as uh, Margareta said, I'm director for a, a, a research lab at KTH, University in Stockholm, called Integrated Transport Research Lab. Uh, and I will tell you soon a bit more about this integrated stuff. Um, but, you know, uh, transportation causes a lot of problems. We have talked about that already, and Matthias gave us a great introduction. Uh, accidents, deaths, a lot of uh, emissions caused by transportation, and that's why we are here today. Uh, we are happy because there are a lot of technology things happening right now. Uh, I'm like a technology nerd as a background, so I love this uh, shift and all the opportunities that electrification, digitalization, and automation gives us, and they all interact. Um, and it's in the interactions the, uh, the most interesting things happen. But to get all this together, um, yes, I'm a technology nerd. I've been working in industry for 15 years. I've seen so many good technolo technological solutions that has never became anything because there was no business model, um, the organizations didn't work together, the policies were not right, the, the regulations didn't work, the users didn't like it, or the users liked something that was not possible to solve technology-wise. So that's why we need to look at this to solve the challenge. We need to look at it from an integrated perspective. We need all the different expertise, but we need also to bring them together. Uh, and that's what we are working with at the Integrated Transport Research Lab, putting all those pieces together to create a smart and sustainable transportation system. So, okay, um, about the, the I, I will give you some uh, glimpse from the research world uh, now, and I will give you three examples of research projects that we have done in the Stockholm area to understand, okay, how will uh, how, how will um, self-driving cars or self-driving buses contribute to sustainability? This is a, a graph. We, we browsed through the literature, the research literature, simulations on uh, how much will the self-driving cars, buses drive. Here we have the private driverless cars. Yes, they, and, and on the y-axis we have the vehicle kilometers traveled. So yes, this means that with the private driverless cars, more kilometers traveled, because we would probably have below zero persons uh, in average in the cars. Okay, we look at driverless taxis. Um, hmm, yeah, most of them will produce more, in most simulations they say, yes, more kilometers traveled. There is some uh, optimistic results here that the kilometers can actually be reduced. This line here is the average with, yeah, as today with manual cars. Uh, but it can be quite significant increase of kilometers traveled due to those shared taxis, self-driving taxis. And then we look at the driverless shared taxi, where we also not, the first one here, we share car. In this one we share ride. Uh, and yes, there are some, okay, it can be more kilometers, but there, yeah, we can be quite optimistic here that there are solutions. But one thing that we should remember when we look at those pictures and numbers is that this is probably a quite optimistic guess. Uh, because most of those simulations are based on assumptions like there is one single transportation solution that satisfies all the problem, uh, you are not allowed to choose which transport mode you would like to have. You have take the car that comes or the taxi that comes. Uh, and I'm not sure that this will... There might be some countries where it can be like this, but we are a bit far from that in Europe and in the US and in many other countries. Um, so probably there would be more dots up there. So uh, this is another way to saying self-driving vehicles will probably create more kilometers. Uh, so no, now three examples from research experiments in Stockholm. The first one is commuting in Stockholm. 
um, my colleagues looked at uh, tra um, commuting, all commuting traffic in the metropolitan area of Stockholm done by private cars. And if we replace, if we replace all those personal cars with uh, shared taxis, uh, in the first set, okay, driverless taxis, we can get rid of 90% of the fleet, 8%, we need 8% of the current private cars. If we share in the, like in a taxi mode, the, the, the car come and pick you up and take you to the work and pick up the next person. And this is optimized and everyone goes with the same system. But at least, it, yeah, it, that's good, less cars, uh, but more kilometers as we saw in the previous picture. 25% more kilometers in this optimal system. Um, and it's not 24% averaged out during the day. One can imagine that it's much more than 24% more traffic during peak hours. Um, sustainable? No, probably not. But what happens if we also share rides? If we give those... Uh, taxis about the same characteristics as the public transport. You can wait up to 10 minutes for your trip, uh, but you don't have to go to the bus stop. You are picked up at your home, but you have to and wait maybe 5-10 minutes. And the trip will be up to 30% longer, than, so you can pick up and uh, drop off other people. Get rid of uh, yeah, some more cars. But most important, things start to happen on the kilometer side. So I think this is a really a sign that sharing is crucial, sharing is needed. But we have to give up a bit on the flexibility and the, uh, the, you have to wait a little bit to fulfill it. Okay, this is one example. Let's go now to an, another example, ride sharing. Because uh, it is about this, about sharing. Um, and sharing not only the car, but also sharing the trips in some way. Uh, we did a ride-sharing experiment, not with self-driving cars, um, but together with a large company in the Stockholm region. We um, invited, of those 12,000 employees, we invited 550 persons, 541, uh, it should be, 541 persons, working in the same department, living in the same area of Stockholm, about 30 kilometers away from the company side. We invited them to do ride sharing, and the public transport between this area and the company, the workplace is quite poor. So it was mainly, uh, mainly going with a, with a private car. 541 persons who... Um, Okay, how many of those, uh, most of them liked the idea and this answered our, our surveys and so on. But from those 541 persons, how many did actually download uh, the ride-sharing app? Yeah, okay, we, we do this first. Uh, it's what I, it's what I said. So, how, how open are you to ride-sharing? Yeah, I'm quite open to be the driver kind of normally distributed between, yeah, I'm open. And as a passenger, yeah, we are quite open to this. We like the idea and we understand the idea. So how many did now do the ride sharing? Eight persons downloaded the app. Eight persons. Of them, three offered the rides really went into the app and, and tried to do this, three persons. And out of those three persons, one actually did do the ride sharing. And that was a person from KTH doing the experiment. Um, so, yeah, first we, we became a bit sad and disappointed about the answers. And then we are researchers, and then we, 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 yeah, as researchers, you're happy also when it's kind of failures, because then we could try to dig into, okay, why didn't you do the ride sharing? Um, and we started to, to interview the people, and we asked them, okay, how often do you reflect on 
your commuting habits and their impact on the environment. Yes, I do that every day, uh, five, six times a week. So people were really aware of this. But the main problem, and we heard this uh, already from Matthias today, and this confirms this. Okay, what was the main problem? Loss of flexibility, driving with a stranger, being social in the morning. Uh, I love that one. Uh, having to rely on others. Yeah, the main problem you see here was the loss of flexibility. Uh, and here also, the loss of flexibility. That was really, and it, it came back in all interviews. Uh, I need the flexibility. I would never ever not take my car uh, because I need the flexibility. So, so that's really a key in user behavior. So let's go to the third example um, of research done in Stockholm. Here we're looking, uh, I have done simulations looking at um, the competition in a driverless future where the different, um, where we have the self-driving private cars competing with a taxi system, for example, or competing with the driverless buses. So we actually had four different... Uh, we had conventional public transport, I didn't put it in here. But we had the conventional car, the private driverless car, and then we had different shared modes, shared driverless taxi system, where we, where we have borrowed the characteristics from different li research literature. Um, shared driverless taxi system, and we had the driverless bus. And in this driverless bus concept, we have taken the public transport system in Stockholm and like boosted it uh, with self-driving cars, thinking, yeah, if we have self-driving cars or self-driving pods, self-driving buses, uh, we can take the, the bus stops closer to the people. We can solve this first last mile problem. We can increase the frequency with public transport. Um, so we have utilized the characteristics of the self-driving pods for public transport. Um, and we, we simulated Stockholm in two, 2040. Uh, okay, this is a bit cryptic. Um, but what I would like to say, we, we uh, simulated several different scenarios where conventional car uh, competed with a driverless buses scenario, Pub, uh, private driverless cars competed with the uh, driverless bus scenarios and so on. Most important here is that the baseline scenario with only manual cars, they say ah, around 80%, 79% in this Stockholm region own a car. And this is not decreased by the driver in the driverless future. Driverless cars or driverless technology will not make us share uh, rides just because, yeah, they're driverless. It will be so cozy to sit there in the driverless car where you can do your work and uh, uh, the car takes you to where you want to go. So a lot of people will... And, and the marginal cost of, of buying in the... the driverless car, it's so small compared to the whole price of the car. So, yeah, why not? You can imagine yourself sit there in your private car and without... It can be congestion, but you can do other things or sleep or do whatever you want to do instead. It will be quite nice. Uh, so, I think the car ownership will not change. It will probably decrease or increase a bit if we don't do anything. The number of trips was about the same, depending on the different scenarios, but the trips in the driverless future were longer, much longer. So, also I would like to, this one is also kind of a research-ish picture, but the, the, what I would like to show you here is that uh, this is a mode shares of different, uh, in the different scenarios, black is the cars, uh, or the, uh, the private mode. This light grey one is the shared mode, public transport or 
shared taxis. In those scenarios, due to the simulation model, we, had, we couldn't have both shared taxis and, and the, the driverless buses in the same simulations. But there are also a lot of researchers suggesting that public transport can be uh, replaced by a shared taxi Uber-ish solution. This says that here, if we look at the shared this taxi solution uh, replacing public transport, it will the the, the, the usage the baseline we have around 40 percent shared mode usage. Here, uh, in those scenarios, this will decrease if we have the shared taxis. The only, the only uh, scenarios where shared mode usage is still on a high level or even increase is when we use the, uh, the self-driving technology to boost public transport. That's good. That's an opportunity for us. Um, yeah, I can talk about this forever. And we can talk more about it uh, later on and all the details about it. Those are first preliminary results, of course. And when you do simulations, it's always simulations. But I think it points in interesting directions. So, yes, can do pods, uh, pod cars or self-driving buses uh, contribute to sustainability? Uh, my conclusion from, from the research is, yes, there is potential, but there are no free lunches. We have to do the work also. Um, and probably it will not come by itself. We need to have regulations, we need to find where the business is, we need to work with making uh, this solu the, these solutions attractive and feel flexible. Uh, for the people that are moving. So, thank you.